Hey guys, Tony here. I hope you're doing well. I'm down at the Ripple conference in Miami, having a good time. I've had quite a few drinks. I just came up to my room from the uh, opening event or party that they had today. And tomorrow and Wednesday will be the main days where you'll have uh, different folks speaking and I'll be doing some interviews as well. So I'll try to get you guys some clips of what's been happening. But we gotta talk about the big news today. Kamala Harris came out in support of crypto, but the way her and her team went about it is asinine. This is completely pathetic. The framing is completely off. She said she will support crypto in hopes that it will help black men. And I don't know why they're singling out. Well, I guess I do know the answer why. This is a political move trying to get more votes, obviously. And we know politicians are going to lie and say all types of things, right? Make promises that they can't keep. This happens on Republican and Democrat side. But this is pretty pathetic. And this is not an anti Kamala Harris video, it's just calling it as it is. We have to stick to the facts and we have to keep things realistic, guys. And Kamala Harris coming out and saying that, you know, this, using this type of framing is pathetic. And what about Spanish people? What about Italians and, and, and Irish? <laughs> like, why does crypto have to be specific to black men? Come on. Like, the framing is just so bad. Um, Let's see what her full crypto policy is. It looks like she's going to put something together, but she's off to a bad start. And uh, she's been lagging behind Donald Trump, who has put out clear guidelines as to what he wants to do, what his campaign will do, and what the Republican campaign policy will be, right? That is very clear. That's out there. Kamala Harris, I don't know what her team is doing. Mark Cuban and Anthony Scaramucci, what are you guys up to? What are you telling her? But this is bad framing. Um, but it's good to see that the pressure is mounting. God, Donald Trump is creating so much pressure and he's winning in the polls right now that it's causing Kamala Harris to do this, but they're taking the wrong approach. So hopefully they can get it right. As I've been telling you guys for a long time, my goal is to get crypto off the ballot, to get it out of the election. It shouldn't be an election issue. It's just a neutral technology. Uh, however, uh, because the Democrats are allowing Gary Genser and Elizabeth Warren to run amok and attack the industry, uh, by doing that, they made it a political issue. And, and Donald Trump and Republicans took advantage of that, of course. So uh, really weird Weird news from Kamala Harris. I'm sure many of you saw it, but we got some positive news, guys. Bitcoin, of course, has been pumping today. It is over, uh, I think, $65,000 at the time of recording. Yes, it touched 66 today. So is this the breakout to new highs? We'll have to wait and see. We need Bitcoin to close the weekly at over 65000 That will give us confirmation that this is indeed the move upwards. We've been faked out many times before. So this is why we have to be smart, put our emotions and feelings to the side. There's a lot of tweets and comments. We're back, baby. We're back. Right? I don't know that yet. Uh, I need confirmation. Bitcoin closes over 65K the end of this week. Then hell yeah, it's bull market vibes all back again. Death to the bears. Right? Um, you know, I'm kidding, guys. But, uh, you know, we got to let these things play out. Let the rallies prove themselves. And I'm sure many of you can relate to this. What I'm saying, uh, if you've been here for multiple cycles, don't get too excited. Be cautiously optimistic. Be even keel uh, so that we can let the market prove itself. And then we can get bullish once we get full confirmation. But guys, Larry Fink, Uncle Larry Fink, has been promoting the hell out of Bitcoin and Ethereum. On the Q3 earnings call for BlackRock, the man said, uh, Bitcoin is an asset class in itself. Talking with institution worldwide uh, about allocation, digital assets remind him of the early days of the mortgage market, which is now $11 trillion. And the president of the United States won't make a difference. What? A statement. Now, he's absolutely right. There's a lot of people, like I said, have been making crypto political, but who's currently president? Biden. And what has happened since 2023? Bitcoin has risen to new all-time highs. The market has been going up. I know certain altcoins haven't caught up, but that's part of the market cycles. We're not in that phase yet. But Bitcoin, make no mistake about it, is not $16,000, $17,000 like it was in December 2022. That happened under Biden and Kamala Harris. The point is, Bitcoin doesn't care who the president is. Bitcoin is correlated to global liquidity, which I've been sharing with you guys for years. It is a hedge against the inflation and debasement of currency. So I hope you guys understand that. And remember, the liquidity enters Bitcoin, then it trickles down to the altcoins. So, um, 
he's spot on. Now, could Donald Trump, who is more pro-crypto entering into the presidency again, be better for businesses? Absolutely, right? We can't deny that. But if Kamala Harris wins, does it mean the bull market's over? Absolutely not. That's just a narrative. The point is, as long as they keep printing money, Bitcoin will keep rising. And we've seen this historically. Uh, Larry Fink also highlighted that uh, Ethereum, he said some positive things about Ethereum. He said Ethereum is, he said the role of Ethereum as a blockchain can grow dramatically. And today was a big day for ETF inflows. So in total, we had $550 million inflows into the Bitcoin ETFs. That's insane. And specifically Bitwise Asset Management, they just tweeted out nearly $100 million inflows into the BitB today. Folks, I hope you're prepared for what's coming. Be patient. The bull market is playing out. The DXY hitting a resistance, hitting that overbought zone. And uh, I'm excited. I am bullish. It doesn't matter if Bitcoin corrects tomorrow and drops by $15,000. I don't care because I see the macro setting up for new all-time highs. And uh, be sure to check out my interview with um, Chris from MM Crypto that I published earlier. He has an $8 million Bitcoin trade going, and he's made a lot of money in this market. So he knows he's been around for multiple cycles, so you can learn a lot from him. Check out that interview, guys. But I'll share some clips from today uh, from the Ripple opening event party, nothing major, my hotel room and so forth. And guys, be sure to check out our sponsor, BitGo, which is one of the top crypto custodians in the market. BitGo is headed up by Mike Belshi, which is a web 1.0, 2.0 legend. BitGo has all types of services, wallet services and so forth. They have a self-custody wallet for retail investors. So check it out. Go to BitGo.com. And guys, uh, be sure to sign up for my free email newsletter. Buy a copy of my book as well to support the podcast. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll talk to you all later. I'll show you guys what the view looks like here. I got an ocean front view. Uh, so pretty cool. And this hotel is actually split into a couple parts. Uh, this building you're seeing here, this circular building, actually has a Ripple Swell logo in the front. And uh, I'll show you guys my room, what it looks like. It's pretty neat, it's pretty big. It's actually like the ocean front view suite. It's actually the nicest hotel room I've stayed in while in Miami. And I've been to quite a few places in Miami. You see some of my clothes on the floor, sorry about that. But just to give you guys a view, of what it looks like here you got my little workstation here and uh yeah it's pretty nice can't complain uh i'm gonna head down to the welcome ceremony down in the hotel lobby i'll give you guys a view of that <laughs> Thank you.